Previously on Describe Your Kill. Who among you shall feed me your breath? Fuck off, Malachi. We've got a healer. <laughs> <laughs> Who said I'm a healer anyway? I'm, no, I'm a bard, not a healer. Here, here comes the fire. Maybe you should uh, hold your breath next time. You hold your damn breath. Shut your damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I called you a good boy. Good You're not morning. a dog. <laughs> what do you call a snake who works for the government? Oh, no. A civil serpent. As the energy of the snake bite card is now mm. in your possession. If you would like to stay for dinner, we are having rice. Hello, this is Chris, your friendly neighbourhood bard, aka Malachi Bordello, and welcome to the latest episode of The Death of Destiny. Thank you for coming along for the ride in this exciting adventure path on whichever platform you frequent, be that Discord, Spotify, Apple Music. It's been so much fun recording it with my three companions and a benevolent GM. Please join me as we explore the fifth portal in pursuit of the Silent Hag Harrow card in episode 25 of The Death of Destiny, Eye of the Tiger. Jason, have you cut your toenails today? Because I can hear <laughs> clacking on the floor blo- Uh, and with that, welcome back, everyone. <laughs> welcome back to Describe Your Kill, everybody. <laughs> Especially to those of you that are listening for the first time. Yes. yes. Yet again, we've had to cut. Episode 29, or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Yet again, we've had to cut the start of the pre-chat out, because it was not suitable <laughs> for the listening audience. How is everyone? Very good. All good. Very good. All good, 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 good. 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 Cool. I had a very good session last week for you guys. Not so much for me, of course. My poor, <laughs> poor undead Jiangxi vampire Naga was not only beaten thoroughly, but let's be honest, humiliated <laughs> and <laughs> embarrassed and really uh, has tarnished all future Nagas with a very <laughs> negative Brush. This is a bit of a mm. running tham- ca- uh, running theme in our campaigns, though. With the exception of Sedisarax, as some of the ones we've run before, um, before Stolen Fate, is this always used to be the case? You really hype up a big boss fight that was coming and get really, really excited for it, and we'd absolutely go and curb stomp it, and then yeah. you die to three wolves outside. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, I think uh, the two fly traps were there, but you had the Nagaji helping you out, so it did soften the blows slightly they did also roll like absolute champs they, they were rolled machines. really well and just as importantly they absorbed your ridiculous run of rolls at the start of that combat <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all my nat 20s were for either for the nagaji uh or yeah they were for the nagaji and the nat ones were for the snake and so yeah it was a series of unfortunate events that led to a Naga that I was very much looking forward to playing that I had prepped a lot for, who was pro well, not even prone, just stricken with hideous laughter on the floor, unable to act, getting chopped up to pieces by Sedisarax the Rapier. <laughs> Such is the game. It's nice to have a win so sometimes. Good. It is, yes. Jason, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call you out today, though, on this week's intro. What have I done? Spank me, I've been a bad boy. (laughs) (laughs) So it begins. (laughs) I have downloaded and installed Balatro, the (laughs) poker (laughs) roguelike game. (laughs) (laughs) And although I want to thank you and shake your hand, I also want to shake you and tell you no, because (laughs) it is (laughs) all-consuming. And I had a Balatro dream last night where <laughs> I was able to play a seven card hand rather than your standard five card hand. And I had seven of a kind to keep coming up. That might even be possible. I'm not sure. But oh, what a game. Yeah, that, that is brilliant. That's now two people's lives I've ruined with that game. It's brilliant. I'm just, yeah, just going around recommending it to people and then just getting angry text messages two days later. <laughs> It, it is so drama. good. And I believe <laughs> yeah. the total game size file is less than 100 megabytes. Yeah. 
and that really? is some That's serious crazy. programming chops. So fair play. I can't remember who. The, do you know who the developers are, Jason? I don't off the top no. of my head. No, it's but what a, a fantastic game. Local studio. Thunk. Local Thunk. There we go. Thank. Okay, ready to play Pathfinder, boys? Oh yeah! Yes. Yes. Oh yeah! We haven't done a full recap for a little while, but I think what I'll do is, because if you are listening to this on the Wednesday it comes out, there are still a couple of days left to get your competition entries in for the competition we are running with awesomedice.com. If you are listening two or three days after this has come out, then it won't be relevant. But hopefully you've all entered and I just want to say a huge thank you to them. We've got plenty more coming up. But I haven't done a huge recap, and I think after tonight's session, next week, before we even start playing, I will do a little intro where we just bring everyone back up to speed because we are chowing through these portals. We begin tonight's session in the fifth portal of Harrow Heart. Jason, anything you'd like to add before I go into the recap? <laughs> no, I was just saying, is everyone knowing where they are and what they're doing? Does that include the party? Or No. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. I, mean, I don't even remember who I am. <laughs> <laughs> not really the T. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love how he keeps popping up in combat. You'll just see. He's like, um, yes. oh, what is the guy from Mortal Kombat? You know, just in the corner. Oh, of the yeah, yeah. Tusty. <laughs> <laughs> Tusty. Just, someone does an uppercut, and just Erikanesh pops up at the bottom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sure there must be spells that we could do to manifest him and get him get him involved. He would bloody love this, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, he would absolutely love it. Oh, so we begin tonight's session through the fifth portal of Harrow Heart. This is the Suit of Stars. And I don't know if it was mentioned last week, actually, but this portal supposedly leads to the Silent Hag. Come on, you got Ooh. anything on the Silent Hag for us, our resident? We've got your meanings tab open. Yes. Uh, first off, it's called the Mute Hag. Pull Pardon? Prepared GM. It's called the Mute Hag. So the GM guide's got it printed wrong and everything else that... Uh, including my Harrow decks, got it wrong as well. Is that exactly, right? Exactly, yes. Are you sure the Mute Hag wasn't the PF1 edition? That could very well be the case, <laughs> but I am not going to look it up now because we've spent way too long on this little segment. The Silent Hag. Okay, I'm just going to read it as is, but replacing every instance of Mute with Silent, okay? Okay. The Silent Hag might be silent, but the eye she holds lets her see to the hearts of men. The hag invokes blood packs and poisonous secrets, the kind that turn brother against brother and son against father. It is a card that, perform that performers loathe, as it leaves them stumbling over their words and songs. But if the uh, silent hag is misaligned, in a Harrow reading, for example, it indicates unshakable loyalty and lucidity of speech, which Ooh. I may not uh, have had reading that. Thank you very much. Come on, I'm going to hold up for my players the artwork. Uh, oh. Don't like it. Don't no, like it. Take it away. Ooh. That Why is like Pan's like Labyrinth. That's horrible. Yes, yeah, that like... Uh, oh, it is very, very Pan's Labyrinth. Yes, an yeah. eyeball. I don't know whether the eye is actually just being held or whether it's embedded in the hand. What it looks looking? embedded. Think that's embedded, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> so this is the card you're going for tonight. <laughs> The silent hag and of course you step through the portal that was the end of last session and you step out into this wilderness it's the word i want to embed on your minds when you're trying to picture what this looks like i have created a little image to make you feel at home so let me just load you into my little generated map you'll see that yes Yes. Keep expecting the Teletubbies to come running over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a Teletubbies feel about it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah very <laughs> Windows XP background there. Yeah. Uh, so you are standing upon an ancient road, its paving stones nearly overgrown with grass. The road winds off into the distance. You are looking out across a landscape of grassy rolling hills dotted here and there with copses of trees. From the north, a plume of dust is heading directly towards you. It's episode 24 of Describe Your Kill the Death of Destiny. What do you do? How far is the dust cloud? Ooh, everybody roll perception. Let's have a little roll. 
<laughs> Good Natural start. 19 for 34. <laughs> no, 39. 39. 39. 37 oh. for Aaron. Mm. 23 natural. for Malachi. And natural 9 for Lupin for 30. Okay, so most of you, Wilhelm, Aaron, and Lupin, you can see that how far away, uh, probably several hundred feet away, you reckon that this plume of dust is going to reach you in approximately two to three minutes. And Wilhelm, with the 39, you're pretty sure that through the quiet of this wilderness landscape, you can hear the beat of hooves upon the ground. Riders of Rohan! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wild <hunt. laughs> yes uh we have uh turns to the group uh, horses they're, they're horses I, I guess there's no point in running <laughs> do we see anything else around got to be here faster than you <laughs> wilderness <laughs> we tr- we tried to run away from a uh cloud dragon so uh yeah. <laughs> i mean anything's possible matty what did you say do we see anything else around us? Are we really in the middle of nowhere, just seeing this dust cloud coming towards us? You are very much in the middle of nowhere, yeah. So you are stood at the end of this road. It almost feels like the road has just stopped. It's like a very bad a construction company on a new housing estate. They've built a path, and then you walk it, and it just stops. There's nothing there. You can see for miles... Uh, well, I say miles, you can see for quite a long way and this road goes winding off. There is gentle hills and slopes and there's these patches of trees. There's even little bits of ice. It, it, the temperature is quite cool. It's not cold, but it is cool. And there's nothing really else to see. It is wilderness. And these, uh, these, this plume of dust from the kind of slightly more barren hilltops towards you, this is to the north of where you're standing, is approaching quickly. Does it? Um, does it look imposing like frightening is it the kind of thing that if you saw a storm coming towards you you'd be like oh shit we need to find shelter like now is it a sandworm is that what you're saying (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) very topical at the moment uh does it look imposing well you can certainly now that you've waited a sort of few seconds or whatever you can now all hear the beating of hooves upon the ground the dust plume isn't enormous it's not hundreds of feet into the sky it's clearly some kind of pack or whatever charging towards you it's not a weather event it's being caused by something on the ground that is making its way towards you it's not coming at the speed of light but you've okay. probably got a couple of minutes before it arrives guys let's just put down our weapons and ask them what news there are from the mark <laughs> maybe maybe i could uh, sing him a song if we just move over to the side of the road and maybe we can helm him down what is that face you're making <laughs> that's uh, maybe that's something we can do i think shows we're friendly doesn't it yeah, you you want to sing a song uh, to hail them down the uh, dust plume appears to be coming ever closer. You have approximately <laughs> one minute to react to it. Wilhelm just steps a couple of steps forward, holding both his hands up and awaiting the horses. And uh, I hope they're riders. Um, yeah, Lupin will uh, will sort of smarten himself up a little bit. Uh, he's adjust his cloak, sort of try and uh, brush brush various bits of dust and vampire blood and all, all sorts of stuff off him off himself and uh, try and look as presentable as possible you didn't clean yourself up before leaving <laughs> that's very unlike you <laughs> it's a long night <laughs> oh god just him rolled out hammering away all the <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! there it is there it is <laughs> <No! laughs> I knew it would be there somewhere it was quicker than I thought but there it is yes that's what Goldo said <laughs> <laughs> yes um I, I would suggest everyone uh, maybe do as I do because I do not feel well and I would not want to fight a fight that I don't have to. Good grief. Who are you? What have you done with Wilhelm? <laughs> I have no idea what the Naga has done with Wilhelm, but I feel very weak. <laughs> are, are the riders close? Are they close enough for us to see whether there are riders on the horses? They are. They are closing. Yes. Uh, everybody, roll another perception check for me, please. That's a fifteen for a total of thirty-three. Uh, <laughs> twenty-three. Seven for twenty-seven. 
that's a natural 17 for Lupin 38. I think that's the best I've rolled in about three weeks. <laughs> Looking <laughs> perception. True. You had a natural 20. I'm sure you did. Anyway, so to answer your question, Aaron, as you have a look across the horizon and maybe doing as Wilhelm does, I've heard no one suggested doing anything different. Malachi's going to maybe sing a song. Uh, <laughs> the, dust, the dust plume approaches and you can begin to clearly see that these are not, in fact, horses. These are a group of centaurs, centaurs. pushing their way Ooh. towards you. You have around 20 seconds to do anything else you want to do before they arrive. I would like to recall knowledge on the centaurs, if at all possible. Okay. Yeah, we can I do will that. Guide, yeah. I will touch Lupin uh, for guidance. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be an arcana or nature check, Jason. Recall knowledge, okay. of course, is a secret check. Can I also recall knowledge? You, of course, yeah. Anybody who wants to roll, just roll a secret arcana or nature check, please. So that's Lupin's roll. Okay. Malachi, not only was that not secret, but that was still a pass. <laughs> um, all, right. all of you have passed. So, Lupin, you initially wanted to roll, but all of you, I'm sure, are familiar with centaurs, your characters at least. Legendary hunters, trackers. They resemble heavily muscled humans. The bodies of powerful horses from the waist down, but of course, human from the waist up typically reclusive but haughty quite handsome there's a whole uh, subsection of people within galarian who lust after the centaurs but they are potentially warriors hunters trackers and yeah unless there's anything else you want to know that's um, what i can tell yeah. you important question um mm. are there reverse centaurs which are like the top half of a horse but the bottom half of a man <laughs> <laughs> i think that would be amazing if there was <laughs> If you want to send us the art of what that looks like, even just an AI generation on that, that's a very valid point. Sadly, nothing we need to worry about tonight, so I'm going to keep things moving. They are regular centaurs, not Honestly, reverse heavily centaurs. Muscled, a heavily muscled naked man sprinting at you with a horse head. It's, it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> Have you been reading my Tumblr again, Kimo? <laughs> Anything else you want to know about the centaur in itself? Um, would we know sort of which parts of Galarian they tend to be from or around? Um, I believe, and I could be wrong, but centaurs tend to flit around the more wild areas of Galarian. So I don't think they're native, and I, I could be wrong oh. on that, but I don't think they're native to a specific region. But there are different types of centaur that you might recognise from being from a certain part of Galarian. Yeah. That's, that's what I was kind of wondering is, can, can we use that to drive a little bit of sort of trying to work out where we are? Yeah, of course, you don't know where you are. Yeah, we could pass the trolls. Hill's Law check that was uh, <laughs> put in the GM guide. Okay, so is anybody, now that you know what the centaurs are, a little bit more knowledge, does anybody want to do anything because they are now just 100 metres away? Are they generally just, are they generally sort of, like if they had an alignment, what what kind of alignment would they have i imagine it would be neutral okay full on neutral they're not known for being violent killers this is not a group of um ogres yeah. or whatever no, are no, coming no. towards yeah, yeah. you so anything else you want to do malachi i might look to inspire courage just as a just as a little support so you do start singing <laughs> yes okay they are now evil <laughs> the hills yeah. are alive the trick of the light means the centaurs are actually 30 foot taller than you imagine <laughs> well i am useful then Woo they're all wearing t-shirts with a kita and a big red cross to it <laughs> okay <laughs> so you stand there at the edge of this path i'm kind of guessing you are all waiting expectantly no weapons drawn is that correct yeah, and, yes. yeah, no weapons drawn. All right. And the centaurs approach, and they are led by a stocky female centaur who looks like this. Now, obviously, you are only seeing the head based on this wonderful artwork from the guide. Uh, Chris, would you like to describe the appearance of the top half of the female centaur? Bright ginger hair tied up in a sort of a massive ponytail that uh, falls right down bright blue eyes kind of she's a little bit angry by, by the looks of it thinnish face wearing looks sort to be sort of sort of plated lizards type armor i guess 
Yes, so she is stocky and short for a centaur, but the top half, this is, with bright orange hair and a braided coil on top of her head, wearing a breastplate that's covered with repeating patterns of interwoven vines. And as she approaches, she calls out in a language that you do not understand, stopping around 20 to 30 feet away from you. Behind her is a group of five male centaurs, slightly larger than her, no weapons drawn, all of them carrying bows and arrows and various pieces of equipment on their bodies. Aaron would like to draw the Wand of True Speech and cast it on himself. You see some apprehension as the wand is drawn and you cast the spell. And immediately you realise, Aaron, that she is speaking in the Sylvan language. And she is calling out, she goes, Make yourselves known! Uh, hello, my name is Aaron Spokepoint. We're travellers. I'm just here with my friends. We want to pass through. Perhaps you could help direct us. <laughs> hey, did you hear that, lads? And she looks around at them. They're all kind of sort of laughing. It turns out he does speak Sylvan. Well, what brings you to our lands? Aaron spoke point. How close are they now? Are they still 20 quite to a 30 distance? feet away? Yeah, they're keeping a, uh, a cautious distance. Uh, as I said, uh, my lady, we are just tr travellers. We're actually here looking for magical artefacts. We mean you no harm, and uh, please forgive us if we've trespassed on your lands. We're, we're not uh, native to this area. We, we are just travellers. Roll a diplomacy check with a plus two. Okay. That's a natural Come on. 12 for a total of 30, so plus two be 32. That is a critical success. Critical, Ooh. critical, critical. Well, Aaron spoke point. Four people seeking uh, help in the wilderness here. It's not something we see every day, and yet we've seen it twice in the last week. Have others come before us? Were they? How, could you maybe describe how they were dressed? Uh, we, this keeps happening to us. People beat us to the locations, and, and, the, and these groups are usually nefarious. And I, I can assure you that we mean no, no harm. We, we just want to find these artifacts. Could you maybe tell me a little bit more about this group that came up before us? I'll tell you about the group. Have you no manners? You not want to make introductions of your friends first. And uh, she turns around and then sort of each of the centaur steps forward and they deeply bow in front of you and she gives them their names as she, <laughs> she introduces them. Yes, and their names are... And? Yes, <laughs> yes. and? Come on, come yes. on. Yes. How many are there, Craig? What are their names? As you said, there was a whole herd. So, There's five. Uh, yeah. There's five yeah. of them, yeah. A small herd. Yeah. Um, yes. And she introduced... Uh, Jazz. <laughs> La <laughs> Lady. Uh, Maverick. <laughs> Misty, a <laughs> fungal, yeah. <laughs> so, so black, black beauty, dress. black you beauty. Them? And my name is uh, my name is Rory Grey Eyes. You may just call me Rory. It's a pleasure to meet you. And Aaron gestures to the others and says, "In common, uh, they're introducing themselves. We should re reciprocate their bow." And he bows very low. Lupin also bows very low, and as he sort of reaches the bottom, turns around. Did, did I hear someone say the word maverick? <laughs> <laughs> Maverick's ears prick up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aaron, I'll tell you now, you're in the home of the Stone Teeth. You're in a place near Iobaria, just slightly east of Brevoy. Are you familiar with it? Um, I, I'm not too sure if I am. Let me just roll a skill check and see if I've heard of it. <laughs> Go That's ahead. More. Uh, what would that be? Uh, society? Society. Okay. Ooh. No, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> it's a natural two. You have not, no. Uh, I'm afraid, no, I, I haven't. Um, but my compatriots may have done. Uh, please forgive them. They do not speak the Sylvan tongue, and I'm afraid I myself only speak it thanks to a magic spell. Um, so I'll, I'll just translate if, if you don't mind. What tongue is it you'd prefer to speak? Do you speak the common tongue. We don't, but uh, we always carry a few little uh, potions of, of tongues. We can <laughs> we can take them, and that'll make life much easier for everybody oh, to be that's, involved. That's very convenient. Yes, uh, yes. If you wouldn't mind <laughs> you, using your supplies, I'll just nip to great. the nearest. I'll nip to the nearest shop. I'll be back in three days. All right. <laughs> 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 
Um, so so they all they all draw potions of tongues and drink them. <laughs> Where do they draw them from? <laughs> Aaron tells the others um, the ne- the name of the place and sees if they have any better knowledge than he does. It's society, you say? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, Malachi doesn't. Uh, yeah, natural 10 for 24 for Lupin. A natural 16 for 28. 28 is pretty good, Wilhelm. So, yeah, that's enough to give you a rough indication. You are in the continent of what's considered to be the continent of Casmeron. Does that mean anything to any one player or... No, not what I've heard of. Casmeron sits to the east of both Avistan and Garund. In terms of where that is in relation to Absalom, it's kind of northeast, not a million miles away. It's east of the Broken Lands, probably a couple of thousand miles to the northeast, but it's all very much connected, known for its wilderness and its emptiness, ultimately. How do you spell her name? Her name is spelt R-O-H-R-R-Y. Well, look, we've been on the road for a while, and seeing strangers is is uh, unusual in these parts. If you'd uh, like to break bread with us, we'd be happy to make a quick camp, and we can maybe parlay a little bit more. That would be very generous. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we'd be particularly keen to hear more information about the travelers that you met before us. You have something other than bread. I've had very, uh, I've had a lot of gluten last night. <laughs> well, we have some dried meats. If that would be of service to you, uh, Wilhelm. Do you like dried meat? <laughs> Do you like to scoff it down your greedy little mouth in stick form? You naughty little piggy! You. <laughs> Do you like to suck on it until your mouth drools on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> we broke a command and I think that's the first no time, isn't it? There's no way this the first time. There's no way. It's going. <laughs> oh. If you like, I can hold your horn whilst you eat it. <laughs> oh, well, that sounds fantastic. Oh, wait, no, you're talking to him. <laughs> Aaron right. <Blairs. laughs> So the centaurs all introduce themselves to you and they gather around and they open their packs and serve out their magical meat sticks and you all um, (laughs) there and Rory says to you, she goes, well, look, it's, as I said, it's unusual to see people here who are, who are here without transport. Getting anywhere is going to take you a little while. The people we saw, well, they seemed more of a hurry. They were um, also just claiming to be travellers but uh, they were heading east down the road you can see in front of you do you have any idea where they were actually heading where does this road lead there's the moor of Carth further east along the road it's a stone gate carved to look like a cyclops face the road passes through its mouth on its route towards Finnadar forest a cyclops face you say I did the road ends at a place watched over by a great stone hag But it's just a stone, you know. It's nothing more than that. We kind of spoke to them for a little while and they seemed in a a hurry and just moved themselves on. A a stone hag, you say? I did. Were these... um, Do these travellers, did they have... um, Feather tokens. Feathers on them. Feather tokens. Did they have... Did they have everything... Oh, like a little bird on their their chest? Yeah. Aye, they did, didn't they? Uh, Maverick, did it? Yes, again, he had one on his back. <laughs> Thank you, Maverick. <laughs> Get that guy a bag of oats. <laughs> Keeping in mind that these guys don't have horse heads. Where does that sound yeah, that, come that's, from? That's true. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> don't They're clapping their meat sticks. <laughs> no, Malachi, you're right. They did. They did have a. All of them wearing like a, a steel token on their on their breastplate like, almost like a badge um like one of these and um lupin retrieves the one he took uh, took from the body a while back yes that's the one thank you maverick yes that's the one <laughs> <laughs> are they friends of yours 
No, they're uh, most certainly not. They've, uh, if they're the same group that we keep running into, then they keep trying to, well, kill us. So uh, it, it sounds like that's where we need to head straight away. You're welcome to go, of course. But were they friendly to you? Were they nice? Aye, they were friendly enough, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's interesting. Is the the last group we we met uh, at, attacked, uh, were attacked by these uh, these individuals. I believe uh, the Band of Blades, I believe they're known as. The Band of Blades? Oh. Well, they never said anything like that to us. It was a brief meeting, you know. It's not often you see strangers appearing here. And then all of a sudden, we got two groups of them. They're saying that there are two groups, I, I, I suppose, Mr. Malice. The Butcher as well. And his assassins. We cannot rule out is uh, that the, the first group may have been may have been a, a sub chapter or even part of the group itself. All we all we knew of the first group was that they were run by Varnev the Butcher character. He could have very well been a low level local lieutenant or something similar. Yes, you you might be right. Either way, I was thinking that although we. Uh, had to fight a very very weak vampire we still got away with not having to deal with the this this group through the last portal well it's definitely they're on the same path as us it certainly seems that this is uh this is beyond coincidence we should uh we should perhaps take the fact that this group is uh is already here as a, a sign that we are along the right path when did they when did they pass through exactly you say i don't know uh three four days maximum and you say it's this road, the the Stone Hag, is about 12 miles that, that way? Well, the Stone Hag, no, it's further. The Stone Hag's probably, I don't know, 20 miles, something like that. If you say that you're here to, to help, would you, would you be willing to, like, travel with us or help us out getting to there? Because I, I think there's probably something there that we we need to to have a look at and deal with. We can guide you there, but honestly, you follow the road, you'll make it there. We're willing to come with you, but we'd need, I don't know, 50 gold each. Uh, thank you kindly for your, your offer. Is uh, However, I, I don't believe, say, if you say, are, are these roads typically safe? Uh, Lupin, was it? Uh, yes, yes. I'm not going to lie to you. The, um, the lands here, they have uh, all sorts of chimeras, bullets, goliath spiders, mammoths. Maybe even a cyclops or two, but, you know, safe. Yes, will you see him? Probably not. But, you know, will you see him? Maybe. Gentlemen, I, I think perhaps one of the options we may have available to us is uh, is the use of our, our potential steed. <laughs> Aaron has already drawn the wondrous figurine and says, I'm well ahead of you, Mr. Malice. I'm very, <laughs> very keen to meet Claude. Then I, I think perhaps we should... Uh, we should offer our grateful thanks to these uh, these wonderful folk and uh, allow them to be on their way with their mission and uh, we shall be on our way with ours. I agree. Uh, m Madam, it was very uh, great to meet you. Thank you very much for, um, well, not killing us on sight, really. Th thank you for guiding us in the right direction. And Wilhelm awkwardly pulls out his, uh, his pound oh, oh. of glutinous rice. <laughs> <laughs> what you got there? <laughs> and hands it over. Um, I may you find a better use for it than I have. Well, feck me. If it ain't a bag of glutinous rice, boys. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, I did not think to myself I'd meet four strangers. One of them a tiefling with a bag of glutinous fecking rice. I and, am uh, not a tiefling. So Please. My forgiveness, Wilhelm. And she takes the rice from you. And as she does, her hand lingers for just a second too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yes, yes, let's. Um, <clears throat> and with that, uh, on, onward with our with our journey. Um, Aaron, May God you... bless you. Yes, and you. And you. Um, Aaron, would you do the honours? And just Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, would you do the honours? The centaurs pack up their things and gallop off. Aaron places the wondrous figurine on the ground. Right, everybody stand back. And he pushes everyone back several steps and then activates the wondrous figurine. Aaron, you place the solid piece of marble shaped as a gleaming elephant statuette onto the floor. And you spend the necessary two actions to command and interact 
with it, speaking its name. Aaron, can I hear you speak the figurine's name? Claude! <laughs> the? <laughs> the wondrous elephant. No, the yeah. infernal <laughs> elephant. The infernal elephant, 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 elephant. Aaron, as you call out the name Claude, the piece of marble begins shimmering and shuddering and before you bursts into an existence a fully grown white elephant (laughs) where is he hang on (laughs) he hasn't got the module (laughs) he was too busy working on his maverick voice this week he didn't have time to prepare the elephant (laughs) no i've closed foundry i got too excited (laughs) (laughs) I finally got the accent right and they're fucked off again. <laughs> Remember, right. folks, describe your kill.com. <laughs> From We've got a competition going podcast. too. Yeah, the most professional <laughs> podcast going. Right, so before I put the artwork in, you've got a choice of two. You've got your standard grey elephant or you've got a very dandy one that appears to have an archer on its back. Oh, well, let's see the dandy one first, please. Yeah, I think... I can tell uh, you that. Dumbo. Consider the potential got Dumbo. Dandy. Okay. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> we'll go with the dandy, dandy one. Look at him. Oh, he yeah. looks like he's smiling. There's his art. Yeah. Oh. I think he's got big clawed energy, hasn't he? He has yeah. got clawed he's got, energy. He's got, a, he's got a platform for us all to stand on as well, which is nice. Especially, yeah. yeah, his token is perfect. So before you stands a gleaming white elephant adorned with some kind of trunk protection and glamorous shin pads and a little platform on his back so that it could accept his riders. Who's that guy on the back of him? Sire. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, Milton. 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 Milton's left our hearts. Okay, so you now have manifested for the first time Claude, the elephant, set in his regalia and on the little platform, which you all climb upon, and begins heading down the eastern road. Now, I do have a new map. Ooh. Yes, please. It's not the most artistic of uh, maps that I've seen, (laughs) but it will do the job. So you are where your party token is, which is in the southwest of this map. And you can see this road leading. Can you see this uh, little thing here? (laughs) Yes. So Uh, that's about 10 miles away. And then over here, far to the east of the map, further down the road. It's a goblet. It's this other thing, (laughs) marker on the map, which is very odd, but we'll, we'll go with it. So you're on the elephant. The centaurs have left you. And you guide the elephant down the eastern road. And does he kind of behave like a like a real creature? Is he like kind of responsive and friendly to us? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it uh, can understand your language. It understands common. It, c- it can't speak common, uh, but it. You tell it to turn left, and the elephant turns left. You tell it to turn right, and Claude turns right. It's uh, for all intents and purposes a real life breathing elephant oh good claude i'm not doing a voice (laughs) you You can add sound effects in later (laughs) (laughs) that's not bad not bad malachi gets the trumpet out and blows the trumpet as well (laughs) claude whips you with his trunk (laughs) (laughs) i don't think he cares (laughs) for that lupin just lupin just sort of feels for his coat pocket to make sure the pistol's still in there all right, so you are now on this road. You are in Iberia, this continent to the northeast of Absalom. You've spoken with the centaurs. They've told you that this band of people wearing steel tokens arrived here a couple of days beforehand and that they also headed east down this road. So how long is it going to t- how long how fast can the elephant move? So you could cover at 40 foot as its movement speed, you can cover 32 miles a day. So it's going to take you probably two to three hours to travel to this landmark that the centaurs have told you about. Is there anything you want to do whilst you're traveling upon said elephant? Yeah, I, I think Lupin would like probably to be doing some research on the band of blades, but I think that's more of a downtime activity rather than something you can do on the back of an elephant. <laughs> Yes, possibly. What's Aaron doing? 
I think just keeping an eye out for danger, because given what the centaurs said about, was it chimeras and uh, cyclops and and all sorts. So, you know, even though I'm guessing the road looks fairly peaceful at the moment, I think he's still very conscious that we're in unfamiliar territory and this is a place that he hasn't recognized, even though we're not, we're probably the closest to Absalom we've been going through any of these portals, but (laughs) but to him it feels the most unfamiliar. So, sure. um, and I think he's just taken it in whilst on the back of Claude, and yeah, he's yeah, just keeping an eye, really. What's Wilhelm doing whilst atop the elephant? I guess just also probably looking around and, uh, you know, seeing if everything's clear. Uh, how, how long are we riding, you said? It's going to be a good two to three hours. Yeah, no, then he's just going to, you know, look around and see what he sees. Everybody roll me a secret d20 roll, please. Yep. Done it. Yes. Thank you very much. So the journey on the back of the elephant, Malachi, I forgot to ask, is there anything that you are doing whilst atop <laughs> the elephant? Dare I ask? He's <laughs> He's got his uh, his little book out and he uh, is trying to draw the, um, the centaurs from memory as we're going through. What little um, book is this? I've got, a, I've got a little book. Yeah. What sketchbook? Well, like a little. It's just like a little notebook where he writes his songs down and ah, okay. Keeps his uh, keeps the cards um, that he holds. If Wilhelm were to peek over his shoulder, it doesn't look good. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean he's he's okay. He's, he's good. He's good. It's not, you know, it's not your, your Rembrandts and and that kind of stuff. But it's very. <laughs> I mean, he's got a, a, a hazy memory, but he'll he'll make he'll try and make it look as good as possible. Mm. Ooh, it was only Malachi. an hour ago as well. <laughs> yeah. Malachi, yeah. I, d- I didn't know you were an actual artist. Well, I am classically trained, but um, it's it's a bit of an inherent skill um, that, I've, that I've picked up. But it's just so that I can remember to, for when we when we when I when I write a song when I write my songs. If anyone on the Discord would like to write their draw their own description of what they think Malachi has currently drawn of the centaurs, <laughs> it's just free to it's post a cock it. of balls. <laughs> <laughs> you can place it in our new channel, which will be called Dick Picks. You can place it in <laughs> oh, <there>. no. <laughs> Please don't make Dick Picks canon. So the journey continues uneventfully and over the horizon as you go up and down these rolling hills throughout this very barren wilderness. It doesn't feel scary, but it does feel barren. And you see in the distance and as you approach on the back of Claude, the wondrous elephant, which is fucking (laughs) mad, a massive cyclops head looming over the ancient road upon which you travel built up between two low hills rather than block the road's passage between the hills the cyclops's yawning mouth forms a short tunnel through the carving so that those who travel the road are symbolically swallowed by the great one-eyed visage Worn inscriptions encircle the carving's bulging eye. Are we close enough to read the inscriptions? Not quite yet, but you are approaching. Is there anything you would like to do as Claude approaches towards this Cyclops head? I want to cast Detect Magic. Aaron, you do not detect magic. Lupin will sort of look up from what he was doing, which was, sort of, I suppose, just general busy work and we'll uh, we'll start paying a little bit more attention and i think we'll uh, we'll just just quietly uh, just draw his pistol from the uh, from inside his coat as well just start, not recognizing from his travels as a merchant that this is potentially likely to be a good ambush point for anyone seeking to go after travelers so lupin draws his pistol malachi uh, he will uh, he'll take a quick sketch of it <laughs> new things um, <laughs> i like it no, okay not really or just no, like a description it. writing a description little description well, I think we said last week, i'm just trying out a hat it's my new thing i'm trying out <laughs> the sketch no i like it okay malachi takes a sketch of this moor of calf as known by rory and what about wilhelm does lupin draw his weapon in a noticeable way 
Um, I, I, I would say he's not actively trying to conceal it, but he's not making a big deal of it either. I think he just um, sort of quietly just, just draw it out of his coat and make sure it's sort of on his lap, sat down. Okay, so. because if Wilhelm sees that, he's going to see that and just follow whatever Lupin's doing. But without a second thought, really just, oh, he's drunk. Okay, I should, I should also, uh, yeah. Aaron, as you approach the massive Cyclops head and Claude continues to pad gently along the path, you can now read the inscriptions, but they are written in a language you do not understand. Aaron, have you got anything that we can read this? I uh, should have, uh... Oh, I would have got a, a potion of true speech from the from the centaurs, but that wouldn't have helped in reading, I suppose. Lupin is, uh, is sort of flicking through various books and and scrolls and and everything, trying to see whether he's got anything. But uh... how much is there, Craig? Is it just a couple of sentences, or is it a, like just it's covered in it? No, not covered in it at all. It's one or two sentences, maybe three max, that you can interpret i would allow someone to roll ooh, linguistics or something relevant that they might have well, I, could, I suppose i could do bardic you could do bardic law of course bardic law would esoteric uh, law would i you could you could try a loop in yeah, sure yeah so that i feel that like that would sort of be thematic you know all the old texts and things Lupin will have gone through i don't know if you've got anything that can help you to interpret yeah. written texts I know there are spells yeah that can do that in it's feet, only but... tongues 20, I'm afraid 24 for Malachi <laughs> uh, natural 18 for Lupin for 41 Lupin Malice you do get a vague understanding although you might not be getting every word that's written there the words on the inscription read I am the Moor of Carth I speak to his strength and wisdom. I am a place sacred and terrible of magic and of power. Here begins your journey. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Oh, we're actually 22 sessions in. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very, very old. This is clearly not new. This is a place that's very old indeed. Mm. I'm going to ask everybody to roll perception checks for me, please. Uh, yep. Natural one. An 11 for Lupin for 32. 7 for 27. <gasps> A natural 20. For 38. As you stand on the top of Claude, Lupin managing to interpret the inscriptions around this huge stone carving and this bulging eye, you immediately hear the sound of deep chanting coming from somewhere beyond the head do we recognize the language you can't quite make out the words you're too far away but with your keen Just... ears you do pick out that there is this deep chanting sound coming from beyond the head should i maybe go check it out in, 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 in uh you know to Taking my hood and uh, becoming less noticeable. We should probably seek to avoid uh, splitting the party. Um, is the... Uh, just to confirm, I'm assuming it is, but I don't think we've explicitly said, this Cyclops mouth, is it large enough that Claude can fit through? Uh, yes, Claude would be able to fit through. Yeah. I suppose the question is, is do we, uh, do we wish to proceed on foot or do we wish to... Uh, continue in our current situation which perhaps does not lend itself to subtlety tough to know not knowing the nature of the chanting that's why i uh, asked to check it out well and also our adversaries let's say were a couple of days ago so we could probably assume and get a bit closer before we actually decide to put claude away yes let's i i i'm with wilhelm let's leave claude here and scout ahead and see if what we can find out well, how, how far away are they? I can't quite hear. You heard better, Aaron. You don't know exactly, but you can estimate anywhere from 50 to 100 feet. What you do notice is that the timbre of the voice is really quite deep. Okay. Uh, Aaron... Sounds ominous. <laughs> I, I'm with you then, Aaron. Aaron will disembark Claude. And 
um, assuming that the others are getting down as well, uh, he'll say, I- I've got spells of invisibility I can cast. Um, Wilhelm, I know you've got your invisible hood, but let's perhaps all stay stealthy. Sure. Sounds good. Indeed, let's, uh, let's not waste spells unnecessarily, but uh, indeed, we should, uh, we should perhaps practice some caution. I've got enough, don't worry. That Lupin nods. And Aaron casts a second level spell of invisibility three times, once on himself, Malachi, and Lupin. As we, um, puts on the hood. So you're all invisible, is that right? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Seemingly, yes. Okay. And you disembark from Claude and you are stood at the the very mouth, the tongue that's leading into the stone path that you have now been traversing for two to three hours. I'm going to say that you all stay low, you're all invisible, maybe a hand on each other, forming a little chain as Mm. you push through. And the tunnel's not very deep and you can immediately see light there. This was clearly maybe formed over a once great cliff, which is now diminished through hundreds of years of erosion. Push through the mouth And coming into view in front of you are two giants that appear deep in meditation and thought. And I'm going to show you the map. He has a map. There's going to be a fight. Prepare. (laughs) They might just be planting rice. Don't worry. (laughs) Everybody roll society checks, please. Secret. Okay. Everybody except Lupin failed miserably. (laughs) Lupin, on the other hand, rolls a natural 20 with his society check. Lupin, you recognize these as tiger giants. Tiger giants are quite nomadic. I'm going to roll over your nat 20. Almost the druid giant, if you like. They have a wanderlust, deeply spiritual, and frequently commune with their ancestors' spirits for guidance and knowledge happiest when left alone to live out traditional lives their impressive size and strength are enough to persuade all but the most dangerous foes to avoid them okay um lupin will sort of quietly communicate that to the others it is uh we should consider it's quite possible they they may they may not be be hostile despite their considerable size is uh I assume tiger giants are not known to be sort of explicitly aggressive from the des- description you've given there. Uh, no, you would probably know that, Lupin. They are not yeah, that's fine. evil in their nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, of course. Yeah, yeah. Tiger giants are not historically evil creatures, but uh, obviously each creature is uh, it's different. We could potentially just, uh, they appear to be preoccupied we could simply move past remain in invisible and uh simply move past them or we could make ourselves visible and, and it, maybe they're so deep in meditation they may not even notice us anyway and leave claude well we could return him to his uh his previous form it'd be a longer walk but i mean they who knows they may be impressed by the size of claude <laughs> just thinking logically what we would do in this situation because then they're just kind of meditating right and mm. they yeah they're in the middle of the road kind of being a bit of a snorlax blocking the path <laughs> but they're not doing any harm as such so if we can get by them undetected then that's not a bad idea yeah malachi would be in awe of it but would be totally like we leave them alone they look yeah I'm, meditation wouldn't I'm going to be honest I do not feel like fighting anything let alone giants today <laughs> let's maybe do the <laughs> safest bet and uh, sneak past we, I, I'm sure we can take the longer walk whoever's been in front of us I, I'm sure they already gone uh, they may have already got what they came for well we can activate Claude another three times this month <laughs> uh, so, I have a Claude counter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Claude clock. Uh, the the alternative is that um, m- maybe I try and uh, I don't know. Well, we should also perhaps consider that uh, is un- unless we have uh, 
as we have another way of communicating, is that we, we would, if they don't speak common, we'll have no way of communicating with them at all. So no. we should consider the potential for a, uh, a misunderstanding of sorts, should they somehow become aware of us and find us attempting to sneak past. I, yes, I think that we should try and sneak past. Uh, I'm going to go and grab Claude unless anyone disagrees. Uh, I do shakes us disagree. Head. Okay, so apart from we can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, good point. Well made. <laughs> yeah. So Aaron will nip back and um how do I turn him back into a statue? Do I like tug in his trunk? Uh, you have to fight him. You have to kill him. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have Just to put him down. Slit his throat. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Great. No, no, you don't have to kill him. You just have to kick him in the face. I think you can spend two actions to do it. I'm going to rule that. That's fine. Okay, so I turn Claude back into a statue, and I walk until I bump into the invisible friends. Okay, and I say, "Right, I've got Claude." Priority straight. You have Claude, and you are about sixty feet away from these two giants that are sitting in a meditative position. Based on the map that you can see, you're at the north of it. They're 60 feet to the south. You, The canyons and cliffs that you can see to the east and west of you, they are pretty high. They're 40 to 50 feet high. They're pretty rough. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, I assume there's no way we could easily... It you seems could. like it would be a bit too easy to just go round them and uh, carry Everybody on roll way. survival checks for me. Uh, yep. Uh, 29. 29 is enough, Aaron. You could... Go round, you feel. I think we'd go round, wouldn't I, we? I was going to say, yeah, I, I feel like Lupin would very much be of the opinion of, look, yes, yes, we are following someone, and yes, time is of the essence, but, you know, if this is going to take us... The, the, we're not going to miss out on them by an hour. Yeah. You know, it is, I think, as opposed to the potential, potential outcome if this goes wrong. If that is, is the plan, maybe we shouldn't have demanifested Claude. <laughs> Just, uh, you know... They would see us on the cliffs, though, with the elephant, though, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they, so, yeah they, I suppose if you are Claude trying to stay tasty. subtle, an elephant is still... Yeah. Okay. okay so the plan is yeah. to go round on yeah. Claude yeah. or not on Claude or invisible? No, no, I think... Not I would say Claude. not on Claude. How yeah, long are you all invisible for? Walking. Ten minutes. Ten minutes, yeah. Okay. So you have a choice. Would you like to go to the northeast or to the southeast? It's a trap! That sounds yeah. like a uh, rollies. Shall I do a D two? Yeah, go on. Which is which? Yeah, which is which? The first, whatever the first one was, northeast. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you approach. You hear these tiger giants. You see them. You get within range of them, invisible, but decide not to engage. And you proceed stealthily along the northeast, taking a detour, which probably adds about an hour to your journey to get round being cautious everybody roll perception checks please okie doke can you hear the excitement in my voice yeah that's a... oh dear that's not great a natural four natural 20. 14 for 34 i have not rolled above a seven 27 for malachi wilhelm what did you get a 34 wilhelm on a dc 34 Ooh. oh my god Oof. You spot, peeking out of the rocks, what appears to be a little bag. Bag? That is it a bag of a air? leather bag. I think we have a tough choice now, guys. We could either just play it safe and go, or we could engage with the adventure and check out what's, uh, <laughs> what's in that bag. Yeah, let's just go check it out. Fuck it. And uh, Wilhelm steps up. So you step forward, Wilhelm, and you see what appears to be a sturdy leather satchel fastened with large clasps. Wilhelm, Wilhelm picks it up, I guess. Wilhelm picks it up? Oh my god. No, don't ask me that. <laughs> How much damage do I take? Just tell me now. <laughs> Rocks fall. Everyone dies. Wilhelm picks Depends up. Depends how much damage a tiger giant does. Wilhelm carefully um, picks up the sturdy leather satchel. Nothing happens. Wilhelm opens it. Wilhelm opens it. Is there anything in it? No, there does not appear to be anything in the satchel. 
Wilhelm puts his hand in there. Wilhelm, you put your hand in the first compartment and your fingers begin tingling as though they had reached into an extra dimensional space. You put your hand in the second compartment, which has no lining, and you suddenly feel cookware and cooking utensils within (laughs) it. And then you feel plates and silverware. Mm. You put your hand in the third compartment, which is lined with plush purple velvet, and you feel that there are berry tarts wrapped in parchment paper. You put your hand in the fourth compartment, which is lined with golden velvet, and you feel what appears to be a bullet inside. The fifth compartment is lined in black wool, and you don't know what this one does. But if you were to study the bag between you eventually, you would realize that this is a knapsack of halfling kind greater. Oh, wow. Right? A level 13 item worth 2,850 gold. Fuck. That's so cute. I was hoping someone would detect magic, but they didn't. It's fine. The first compartment is the equivalent of a bag of holding type 2. The second one can be used to prepare a meal. The third one gives you these tarts. They are 48 plus 8 hit points, and there are six per day that are made at breakfast time. Ooh, breakfast! breakfast. <laughs> yes! The fourth compartment <laughs> contains a lucky magic sling bullet, and if you attack with it, you get advantage. And the fifth compartment has black wool. Once per day, you can unfold the compartment into a five-foot diameter portal on the ground. And the first person to step into the portal from an adjacent square is teleported away with the same effect as a fifth level translocate spell. Except the creature takes the knapsack with them. (laughs) Cool. That is a cool. cool item. That and it wasn't cool. a mimic. Thank the Lord. <laughs> what do we learn from that, Lupin? Exactly. Stealing is cool. <laughs> <laughs> One for your collection. Yes, yes. Would you like to have it? I uh, don't really have much use for cookware. This, uh, is especially this uh, purple velvet uh, compartment, it's just, it screams, it screams Malachi, but Malachi can teleport already, so... I already have this one, and uh, produces the spacious pouch. Uh, I am partial to a berry tart. <laughs> <laughs> a creature can unwrap and eat one tart with an interact action to gain 48 plus 8 hit points, and it produces, sorry, four tarts per day. So in it, so if I have the knapsack <gasps> Healing. in an action, I can go... Home. You need to, no, re- you have to withdraw them at the start it. of the yeah. day and hand them out. If it's in the next sack, that'll be two actions so, to draw. So it, it mentions uh, yeah. they appear at breakfast ta- at breakfast time. So oh god, we find. <laughs> oh god, what <laughs> specific what type of done? berries are these? Yeah, <laughs> a breakfast item. <laughs> breakfast <laughs> mentioned. Milk was going to be sp- shot. put out. <laughs> oh dear. I want it, so I don't know why we're still talking yeah, about it. Yeah, go for it, Matty. <laughs> go for it, Matty. Drag, drag and drop it. I want Aaron. Some berry tarts. Come on. Yeah. Berries and cream. <laughs> berries yeah, and he's, cream. He's, dance. he's yeah. doing the berry tart dance now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Aaron yeah, is going Aaron to take it. the knapsack, which is an, a wonderful word. The knapsack of halfling kind, greater. Also, within the knapsack, Wilhelm, you find a hide map. As you open it up, it shows interesting landmarks between the ice steps and the moor of Carth. One of these landmarks is a sketch of a hill that bears an appearance similar to that of the Silent Hag. Ooh. Mm. We could follow this map. That should make things easier. <clears throat> Marvellous. That's good. Let's. Uh, yeah. Oh, I take it. I'll take let's... it. Sure, you could take it. Um, All right. So you have found this wonderful item, but you are still above the tiger giants what do you do can we see a clear path then moving down where we're going on this very side? much can aaron uh, uh, who's got that map oh i picked I, I picked it up so how far are we he gets what? it out <laughs> i don't know how to read maps <laughs> <laughs> well we're here right at the uh at the cyclops head and uh how far are we gm to the place we're going 
<laughs> Looking at the map, Malachi, you think you are still a good 12 miles from the location. Okay, so, yeah, let's get there um, relaxed and, uh, you know, not fatigued. So Aaron will put Claude down again and activate him. You activate Claude, and once more, your wondrous elephant comes into existence, growing from the marble figurine. As you ride to the east, coming into view is a steep, bare hillside that at first seems to portray odd patterns of erosion. As you get closer upon observation, these have been carved to resemble a long, narrow face. Two small, shallow caves look out over the ancient road part way up the carved hillside, resembling nothing so much as empty eye sockets above a narrow spur of rock that evokes imagery of an almost beak-like nose. What appears to be a third cave sits near the ground, yet this stalactite and stalagmite-adorned opening seems to have been blocked from within by an immense round boulder carved to resemble an eye. Everybody roll occultism checks. This sounds like our place. Mm. My second natural one today. <laughs> 32. This is not Wilhelm's bag. Oh, he likes to hit things, not look at them. Um, yes. Nine for 23. Just tell me when I have to roll an attack roll to, that, to identify something. Luckily, your sorcerer, Aaron, pretty familiar to you that this hillside has been carved into a representation of the silent hag. <gasps> this is it. This, this is the place. These carvings are meant to represent the hag, foul creatures. We should be cautious. Roger that. Very much agreed. And, uh, Lupin, once again, draws his pistol. Do we go in, think we just go in the front door, right? Uh, d- it depends how your boulder moving skills. It, it, is, it, it is said that the, the hag sees into the hearts of men, so now would be a good time for any of you to say if you're, uh, to, to just tell us if you're evil. <laughs> And uh, Malachi looks at Claude. <laughs> Claude no. w- waves his trunk. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we've got Claude. Maybe Claude can help us to try and push it. He's a mighty and majestic elephant. Maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe we can put him to work a bit and, and maybe move that boulder. <laughs> yes, because he's he's not been working much recently. <laughs> he's had a, he's had a drink. I mean, he's he's <laughs> taken two shifts of three for a whole month in one day. He, he, I don't think he needs a break. So, do you approach this face, if you like? Yeah, I think yeah, we're going think to. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. At the, ver- yeah. at the very least, I think we're going to approach it. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. dismount from Claude. The face itself is about 50 feet high. The two eye socket caves are empty. A cursory examination of the lower entrance confirms that, yes, it is indeed a cave and has been blocked by this boulder it's around five foot diameter so it's not massive right uh everybody roll give me protect um everybody give me a perception check and oh, hey. 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 i'm having the duality of perception rolls today. <laughs> yeah see that everything or nothing with a natural 20 you can see that it would look like this boulder can be rotated. Wilhelm is going to relay that information to the others and say, which one of you could help me try to rotate it? How big is the boulder? Is it like, would it, is it Five, big enough? It needs it's not massive. Us? Five foot diameter. I can, I can certainly help. Is uh, I'm not, uh, not built for strength, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best. However, uh, let let, uh, let us be cautious. We should perhaps ensure that this isn't a trap before we uh, start handling it. It does seem um, very well hidden for a trigger of a trap. You know, normally you'd want someone to trigger your traps. Potentially. Is, uh, I, I think there's perhaps no harm in checking, though. That's true, yes. So, I, I mean, suppose the question here is, is anyone trained in thievery or 
Is I am a master in thievery, okay. and I do have some stuff to help me with uh, with trap thingies. Okay, cool. So yeah, I v- v- would like to go up to the eye to the boulder and uh, just check if it's a trap, if it's trapped in any way. Sure. So first of all, roll me a secret thievery check, please, with any bonuses that you might have. Oh no, he only gets a plus to AC um, in case he triggers a trap. Might be useful. But, yeah, <laughs> might, might be. Lupin will take a step back. <laughs> um, I, I will guide you. Thank you. As well. So that's a status bonus of plus one, right? I agree. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, Wilhelm. You look and it does not appear to be trapped in any way. What I will ask you to do, though, Wilhelm, is roll me another open perception check as you step up towards the stalagmite stalactites and the eye. Natural <laughs> four, that's a 24. Yeah, but I'm going to give you a plus two on that for your thievery check. So, although it doesn't appear to be trapped, what do you notice within the stalactites and the stalagmites and on the boulder itself? are chips and dents within the stone that look reasonably fresh. Um, Lupin, you might want to come check this out. Uh, d- don't worry, this is not, uh, it's not a trap, I, I think. But uh, someone's been here and someone's tried to, I don't know, maybe destroy these things, uh, but obviously failed. Could be that the guys who came before us uh, didn't figure out what to do here or something. Mm. Yes, my thoughts exactly is uh, if others' experiences with these these individuals have been anything to go by, it appears that subtlety is uh, perhaps not their strong suit. I'm aware of the irony of us saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Should we just try to twist the boulder and then uh, see what happens? Or is there something you want to do first? I have, I have no particular suggestions. I think... Uh, we should, we should consider time perhaps more of the essence than it was before, if they are still inside. That's, yes, that seems uh, logical. Okay, let's, uh, let's do it then. Yeah, and, let's go. Yeah, so Lupin will, will step up and uh, will brace himself to, to try and move this boulder. Yeah. Both as well. Both of you roll athletics checks. <laughs> oh my god, no. <sighs> Back to the rules. That's a natural two for 17. Oh, only, okay. only checks to Can I help seeing Mr. Malice struggling? <laughs> yeah, yeah like roll the name check. DC 20. A natural oh. 19. Oh. For a 36. 25. And Aaron, you managed to aid the old, decrepit Lupin Malice. It's <laughs> <laughs> feeble. I loosened it. I loosened it. You all saw I loosened it. <laughs> I, I might be sick, Lupin, but that's... <laughs> But that's pitiful. That's <laughs> really... Uh... <laughs> Aaron, you step in and you just aid as Wilhelm with one hand, maybe even <laughs> two fingers, just manages to rotate the boulder around 45 degrees to the left. As you do so, you reach a bite point, but the boulder will not progress anymore. And as your hand leaves the boulder, it rotates back towards you okay this seems like uh, a puzzle okay. designed for third graders that's clearly too much of us <laughs> to ask so uh should we just concede this card and go to the next portal <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um i would like everybody to roll either something on harrow law fortune telling law or occultism or anything related to it please uh yeah public public I will roll occultism for a 36. I roll occultism for... <laughs> for a 17. Uh, yeah. uh, 27 for Lupin. Wilhelm, you don't know, but Aaron Lupin, you recall that the silent hag is often invoked when forging blood pacts involving secrets. And when you take a closer look, you see what appears to be dried blood on the cave. Oof. Okay, so gentlemen, uh, bear with me one second, and uh, he steps Done. over to um, steps over to one of the one of the stalactites, 
and um, unsheaths his sword cane and just runs it across his palm. Lupin, you take two points of slashing damage. Yep. Okay. And then grasps the uh, grasps the the tip of the stalactite. As you grip, <laughs> fuck's sake, Chris. As you grip the tip of the stalactite, you hear Grolda go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the blood that leaks from your hand seems to spread across the eye, spreading thinly across its surface, and you feel like the eye would rotate more easily. Let's try again. Uh, yes, yeah, you, you do it this time. I've, uh, I've obviously <laughs> cut my hand. <laughs> Aaron, sure. roll a perception check. Okay. Uh, 20. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can we try and move the boulder again? Move the boulder yep. again, yes. You move the boulder again. This time, it moves far more freely to the left, and it doesn't appear to want to come back to its original position more quickly. But it doesn't... N- 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 Nothing happens when you slide it to the left. How about sliding it to the right, then? <laughs> you slide it to the right, and nothing happens. <laughs> Two steps now. I was like, yeah. going to say, yeah, so <laughs> <just> start <laughs> doing the uptown funk. <laughs> If it goes left, it might go right, it might go up, it might go down. I think we should try it all. <laughs> right, Malachi goes up and tries to push it up. Malachi, you push the eye up and the eye, the pupil, glides easily and further than you have pushed it before, revealing a small hollow within the boulder. Why did it work when he did it, but not when I did it? Because you did it badly. Well, I'm the special one. <laughs> And you see his eyes go black. And as <laughs> the eye raises up, there you see a stone coffer embedded within the niche. Wow. What is a coffer? I think it's like a sort of a con- container box. for money. Yes, a strong box or small chest for holding valuables. Thank you, Lupin. Malachi being at the forefront after pushing everybody out of the way to push the, this boulder up. And and it's it's now this is in front of me, right? Yes, it appears to yeah, have a lid, like a small, on it, almost pouch. like a coffin. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is now not ominous, and he puts his hand out to try and open the top of the box. You open the top of the box. Inside are twelve eye-shaped gemstones worth fifty gold. Alongside it is an eye of apprehension. But beneath the 12 eye-shaped gemstones, beneath the eye of apprehension, face down is a card. Malachi, as you reach down and take the card, a familiar sensation washes over you because you have located another card from the Deck of Destiny. This card is called the Silent Hag. And the curtain comes down! I have the power. Gotta cut them off. No fighting this time. You've been listening to Describe Your Kill, The Death of Destiny. Find out more at describeyourkill.com. Thank you to Paizo, Michael Gelfi, Creator Cord, Sirenscape, Kevin McLeod, Foundry and Sigil Services. Get all the links on our website. This podcast uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. Used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. This podcast is not published, endorsed or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com.